One of the modes that Nikon included on this camera is the moonshot mode. And I've seen some reviewers say, how many, how many pictures of the moon do you need? But truth be told, this is a very good tool and I'm happy that Nikon included this because there are several situations where you might want to take pictures of the moon and I'm going to explain why. These are all pictures I took of the moon with my P915 mid-April of 2022, a day before the full moon. Over the years, I had taken pictures of the moon before with my P500, but those pictures of the moon came out well only because I've been a photography buff since my teenage years and I knew how to put the manual settings in to get the picture just right. This moon setting on the P950 allows people with very limited knowledge of photography to adjust the camera, zoom in, and snap a good picture. A day after the April full moon, I took my family to the beach and I set up my tripod. Just before 9pm the moon began to rise and my family was so thrilled to see it appearing over the horizon. I had wanted to capture the moon as it appears to rise from the ocean, but unfortunately the clouds sitting on the horizon prevented that. Now you're probably wondering why the moon has this orange-red look in the picture, so I'll explain why. At such a low angle, the reflected light from the moon has to travel through more layers of the atmosphere, and the atmosphere also contains moisture. As we learned in high school science class, white light is made up of all the colors of the rainbow. However, the blues and the greens are more easily dispersed by the moisture in the atmosphere. So by the time the light gets to us, we have mostly the red and orange hues remaining, hence this color. One of the things I did while the camera was in moonshot mode was to take several test pictures with and without the flash. Having done that, I was able to place everyone for a family portrait. My kids are still minors, so I have decided not to show their faces. When I shared this picture with my relatives on social media, they actually thought I had taken the photo in a studio. But no, this was taken just after 9pm, on the beach, in total darkness. Well, except for the moonlight. As the moon continued to rise, I took more pictures, and with the clouds passing between me and the moon, no two pictures came out the same. Pictures of the moon are not only useful for family portraits. Astronomers and other scientists are very interested in the moon, but they can't observe all the possible angles, especially when there's a local phenomenon. Sometimes an object passes in front of the moon and that makes for a great picture, that companies are willing to pay top dollar for. There is a free app called Skyview that you can use to locate stars, planets, and man-made satellites in the night sky. So on any given night, you can mount your camera on a tripod and just follow the moon as you wait for the perfect moment to snap that picture. Another phenomenon that you might want to photograph is a lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse occurs when the Earth passes between the moon and the sun. As a result, the moon goes dark for a while as it hides in the Earth's shadow. The next lunar eclipse is scheduled to occur on May 15th to 16th of 2022, and all the places on this globe that are highlighted in dark pink will be able to see the full eclipse. If you miss that eclipse, then you can catch the next one on November 7th to 8th of 2022. Check out the description below as I have posted the link to the website where you'll be able to get the dates and visible locations of future eclipses.